Hello and welcome to another episode with the Nairobi Hospital. Today I'm joined by Dr. Amina Habib of the Internal Medicine. We will be discussing about brain tumor. Karibu sana daktari. Thank you. So about brain tumor, it's one of the diseases or conditions that is rarely detected at an early stage. Maybe sure. you could start us off with what is brain tumor? So generally we know what cancer is, mm -hmm. an abnormal tumor growth. So this can happen, when we're talking of brain tumors, it can be primarily coming from the brain cells or migrating from any other body part, meaning the cancer is originating from somewhere else, going into the brain. So essentially, in a very general overview, I would categorize them as either coming from primarily from the brain or spreading to the brain. Then from that, we can also look at it, is it a benign or cancerous? Benign is really a simple growth that causes not much harm and its ability to spread is low when vis-a-vis -vis if you're comparing with a cancerous growth which is of course the cancer as we know it mm -hmm. yeah primarily there are different types of uh, brain tumors True. close to 130 True. either benign or cancerous maybe you could mention some of them and uh, highlight on the differences among them um so how would i put this so mostly it's going to be common in children uh, very rarely in adults, mm -hmm. though of course it can occur at any age. So when we say there are 130, there are those that are mostly going to be in the adolescent children group and there are those that are going to be predominantly in the adult group. Mm -hmm. So in the adult group, um, we would start with a glioblastoma. It's the most common and the most, can I say, serious. Um, in the children we have medalloblastoma which is also the most common and the most aggressive. Mm -hmm. And you know, without really getting into the medical jargon, there are so many with very complex names, mm -hmm. but uh, I would classify them as early onset children mm -hmm. and adult onset. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe you could explain also the process of treatment? So for treatment, I'd say it is paramount to get a multidisciplinary team. What this means is essentially having different profession coming together to manage the patient. Mm -hmm. So we have of course surgical team, we have the radio oncologist team, they play a very vital role in the treatment mm -hmm. and we have um, physiotherapies to help, to help with the rehabilitation of the patient mm -hmm. after the treatment as mm -hmm. well. So you know a very big team is involved. So that means yeah. actually one can go through all that treatment and actually live a normal life after it depends with the tumor. Okay. It depends with the tumor. I wouldn't want to put out a message that all brain tumors are curable. You know, after the treatment, you can move on with your life. Mm -hmm. But it really depends on the tumor. We have good outcomes here. So, of the very aggressive tumors, it really depends on a lot of things. What the patient comes with, the age, the functional status, how stable and fit is the patient to tolerate the treatment, mm -hmm. things like that. Okay. But yes, we do have success stories as well. What are some of the symptoms that one can look out for when it comes to addressing matters brain tumor? Um, I'd say the most common symptoms is headache. So maybe someone has been having headaches, but now they're changing in pattern and frequency mm -hmm. um, and severity, of course. Um, that's the most common across the board symptom. Mm -hmm. Then we also have nausea vomiting, especially in the morning. This happens, of course, because of increased pressures in the brain. They just cause someone to bring it out. Um, convulsion, seizures, this can happen. There could be like change in personality, cognition, things like that. Um, weakness in the body, weakness in mentation. Um, but I'd say the most common that someone would notice is a headache, nausea and vomiting. Yeah, okay. What are the risk factors that uh, enhances or increases the chances of one getting brain tumor? Mm. You know, I'd first start by saying I know there's a lot of myth out there with mobile phones and electric cables and yeah. this and that, mm. but really there's no science behind that as yet. Okay. Um, there's currently a very huge study in the UK. They've recruited about 100,000 people using mobile phones mm -hmm. and they're just following them up to see, you know, are these people going to be predisposed to anything, even if not a brain tumor, by using these mobile phones with their pattern of use? Mm -hmm. But uh, when we go to the real risk factors that have been backed by science, number one would be 
immunosuppression. By immunosuppression, I mean immune system that is suppressed. That could be by diseases like the HIV. It could be by um, patients taking medication that suppress the immune system, maybe transplant patients. Um, another risk factor is uh, receiving prior radiotherapy, prior radiation treatment. Especially this we see in children who had received prior radiotherapy in their early life. Um, a significant other risk factor would be maybe even chemotherapy received early in life, some genetic familial syndrome. We've seen some clustering of syndromes. You know, that family has brain tumors, and you can't really explain why, but we just know it's familial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And also mention on the importance of uh, the, the regular medical checkups. Right. Because we really, we, we actually go to hospital. Right. When it's at that point where my headaches have become so persistent. Yeah. I'm feeling nauseated. Yeah. And there's so much vomiting. Yeah. So, um... It depends with who you meet across. Okay. Um, it depends with your pattern of symptoms. Um, I know with some brain syndromes, by brain syndromes I mean, you know, the migraine headache, the cluster headaches, they can actually present with headaches, very, very severe in fact, with vomiting as well. So I think it's just, do we screen everyone with a headache and nausea vomiting? Maybe, maybe not. It really depends with the pattern. And there's always a cue to say, mm, this is different. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should go a step further and mm -hmm. image actually and see, is there something that we are missing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. As Nairobi Hospital, how many cases do you handle when it comes to For brain, brain tumors? Tumor. Yeah. So, um, when you look at population studies, brain tumors are rare to begin with. So, I'd say we handle a, a good majority of patients. Uh, being a big center with a good facility of treatment, but either way, it's still a small number just because brain tumors are not very common. Yeah, but we still get a good number, at least practice. Is there a certain region where the residents are mostly pre-exposed to brain tumor? Um, I'd say no for now, just because we don't have those studies in Kenya. But uh, there are regions like uh, who had been exposed to very high doses of radiation, you know, in Japan when they had the big nuclear bomb in here. So those are places that you can actually say yes and you can confirm this. So it might seem like maybe people from, for example, Kiambu come a lot with brain tumors, this and that. But you see maybe this is a big center and this might be their only point of treatment. So they seem to be many, but until actually a study is done, we can never really say for certain that for sure people from Kiambu do have some risk factor for brain tumors. So it's not a clear cut answer. Okay. No, until studies are done, no one can really Very come fine. out here. Any parting shots? Any parting shots, just use your mobile phones. Don't be too worried. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, always remember a headache that is too severe warrants at least a medical review. Yes. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Tari, for that insightful information on brain tumors. Thank you very much for joining us on this segment with the Nairobi Hospital. Join us next time. I'm Othoni Wabero.